How's it going? We are here with Mark Rushbrook and the new Mustang GTD. Now, I know the basics of the car. It's got a 5.2 liter supercharged V8, 800 horsepower. It's basically a GT3 car for the road. What did you do? How did this car come about? Does it start as a race car? Does it start as a road Mustang? Yeah, What's the it, creation of this It's flight? an endless cycle. Honestly, we started with a Mustang Dark Horse okay. as a road car. And that was the basis for the design and development of the Mustang GT3 mm -hmm. race car, which obviously within the rules, we wanted to maximize track width. We wanted to maximize the engine performance, the aerodynamics performance, sure. weight distribution and everything from that in the race car. But then what actually happened is when our senior management, Jim Parley, when he, he saw how great the Mustang GT3 race car looked, he said, uh -huh. we need one of those for the road. And that was the idea behind the Mustang GTD. So started as a streetcar dark horse, became a Mustang GT3 race car, and now comes back to the road as a Mustang GTD, top of our Mustang pyramid. So is this a derivation of the GT500 engine? It, it is the same basic engine, but we're always learning, we're always making improvements to it. Um, it's dry sump in this case. Uh, and more power. Can we go ahead and check out the interior real Absolutely. quick? Absolutely. It's again, this starts as a basic Mustang interior mm -hmm. in terms of the layout with, with the screens. Uh, there are carbon fiber accents in here and many of the trim pieces, um, 3D printed titanium uh, shift paddles are some of the key features in here as well. So again, it'll feel like you're sitting in a Mustang, but it's a very special set of treatments. Is this a here. totally new transmission? Because I know the GT500 has a seven speed dual clutch. This has eight speeds, right? Correct. And this is actually a, a transaxle. Oh, yeah. So so in the GT500 uh -huh. or all, all the other Mustangs for the street, you've got the engine with a transmission on the back of it. Sure. In this case, we've got our 5.2 supercharged engine with a carbon fiber drive shaft wow. going to the rear to a transaxle. So by moving that amount of weight from near to the front wheels, yeah. near to the rear wheels, that is a, a massive shift and we get close to that 50-50 weight distribution. Very cool. Now, can you talk to me about the inboard suspension right here? Yeah. So at the same time, when we put the transaxle in the rear and we looked at the suspension architecture, we had a lot of freedom back there. So we put in a, a double wishbone suspension uh, with actually a push rod actuating it so that the dampers and the springs are now laying horizontal, which is very effective for, for wheel control. Um, but with that package, there was an idea, hey, that looks like a work of art. It is incredible. So we want to allow customers to be able to appreciate it. So that was the idea to, to put the window in there to be able to see the suspension. So it looks fantastic sitting still but it looks even better as you're I've driving seen, down I've the road. I've seen the clips of it driving, it's unbelievable. Now, can we check out the rear of the car? Cause that wing is absolutely <laughs> insane. Swan neck style, massive GT3 so, wing. So as we develop the, the GT3 race car, you need a rear wing on it to, to get it up away from the body, to get into the airflow, to create the downforce. And the stiffest place to, to mount a mm -hmm. rear wing is actually into the C-pillar. Yeah, so that's wow, that's see, very unique, actually. That's why you see those arms reaching so far forward to get into that stiffest point to support the really high loads that you have there. So the concept to mount into the C-pillar, to have the rear wing in this location, that was part of the Mustang GT3 race car. What's new and different here is we actually have DRS, mm -hmm. so a drag reduction system, so you can you can have a lot of downforce, but when DRS is, is activated and the flap opens up. So is there a button in the cabin that it, you can click? It, so it, it's, it's automatic? Auto, it's automatic for gotcha. you. And it's, it's important because as you reduce that drag, you're also reducing the downforce. Yep. And if you reduce it only in the rear, then you have balance issues. Of course. So there are also flaps in the front Very cool. that are actuated with it to, sh to shed some of the downforce on the front at the same time that you're shedding it on the rear. Now, I think I've seen spy shots of you guys testing at the Nürburgring. Are we going to hopefully see a time in the near future? The, when we announced this car, we committed that we would run sub seven minutes at the, at the Nürburgring. So that is an important deliverable for us. And was there any other cars? I mean, I've heard the obvious comparison is the GT3 RS. Are there other vehicles you're benchmarking or you're kind of Ford's doing their own it's thing. Into, it's certainly into that category, and that's part of that's part of why we race a Mustang GT3 uh -huh. is to be able to race against the best premium vehicles in the world, sports cars. 
So to be able to race against Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Mercedes, McLaren, that's, sure. those are all important competitors for us on the racetrack, but also on the road. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. This car is incredible. Then we have a track mode that lowers the front about 30 millimeters and the rear about 40 millimeters, and uh, it uh, allows you to get that great track performance. And I didn't talk about it, but the 345 rear is, uh, uh, we had to change the suspension architecture. So if anybody is able to take a look at it, we actually have an inboard damper system on this vehicle, and we've got it showcased with a, a rear window that you can see the suspension as it moves. It is a thing of beauty. We hope everybody is able to take a look at it as well. We, thought we had, had this commitment. We knew we were going to do a seventh generation Mustang for the road, and part of Mustang is having a, a full lineup. And it was planned to have the EcoBoost, the Mustang GT, and the Mustang Dark Horse. And that's, that was the, the initial starting point of what was going to be launched for Mustang. So our job in motorsports then was to take that fantastic lineup of Mustangs and go race them around the world. So that happens with a silhouette in NASCAR and NHRA and Australia Supercars. But what we were really excited about was the convergence of GT racing and sports car racing. What is going on with the strange trees at Goodwood? I guess that's the Goodwood right there. Cool to see Matt Armstrong's McLaren 720S. I believe this started life as a crashed 720 and it's been brought to life. This thing looks awesome. Look at this, a whole bunch of Americans oh, what's in, up? in England. <laughs> yeah. Good. I haven't seen you since like SEMA Absolutely. four or five yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Captain Great. Crankshaft guys, Tavarish. Yeah. Somehow here. So have you finished the P1? No. 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 Well, thank light, you for bringing it up though. <laughs> light, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, that. cool. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. might be close. It to wasn't that. Are you on part 68? I am not I'm not part 68. Yeah, okay. We're on part 67. No, no, I think we're like, like, like a video every two months. Yeah, yeah, a video every two, two or three years. Um, no, so right now we are in the midst of uh, making, we have to make the wiring harness for a P1. Okay. Uh, and then we're, we're putting putting the engine together, which which uh, has double the horsepower of a regular P1. Really? Um, so yeah, and we're removing the hybrid system and all that stuff. So it's, uh, it's going to be. Batteries, dude. Exactly battery, yeah. We all know that that car, you know, you put a 9 volt battery in it and that yeah. gives the soul back to a P1. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The P1 owners deserve an actual solution because 100%. No, there's, a, there's a graveyard in Newport of like 10 of them just yeah. sitting there. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. it's the P1 and 19 and the LaFerrari are just they just have these same battery problems because they're all from the early 2010s. Yeah, you know, the, P, the 918s though. 918, like 918 is less so because yeah, they yeah. have a bigger company behind them. Nice uh, but the LaFerrari for sure and uh, P1 for sure. More than 918. What? More 918s than. Yeah, there are nine hundred eighteen. No, more numbers of them, but oh, but yeah, less yeah. ones with problems. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's there are actually nine hundred eighteen of them. They, they had, that, how many uh, La Ferraris? Four ninety nine, but probably like six hundred. Well, they, yeah. they, they I think it was like seven twenty five. The, the Pope, the Pope has three hundred of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Theirs was an extra. <laughs> the Pope is just tripping over them. Literally. <laughs> uh, and then there were uh, three seventy five P ones yeah. plus yeah. the three seventy four. Yeah. There's three seventy four and a half. Yeah. And a half. There you go.